Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And do you sometimes have the feeling that you're playing Gwent, you're having a lot of fun, but you're not necessarily winning? Well, I have that feeling too sometimes, especially with the deck that we're going to talk about today. It's definitely, and I should preface this very clearly, it's definitely not a very competitive deck. I have won on pro rank with this deck, but it is inherently not a competitive deck, so be warned. But the addition of Alzur as a character was really, really fun, and his card reflects that really, really fun motion as uh, as well it really really is a really cool random card reminiscent of the earlier days of gwent and today i'm actually going to show you a deck that is based all around alzur and it's called alzur's double floss so alzur's double floss it is yeah a, a really ridiculous name just for a ridiculous deck because Alzur, of course, is known in Gwent for the other card, Alzur's Double Cross, and that's why I just called it Alzur's Double Floss. But we're also working in a Milf Guardian deck with the Double Cross ability, so it just perfectly fits. So let's focus on Alzur first. So Alzur, whenever you play a spell card, spawn a random unit with the same provision cost as that spell card on this row. And you can do that three times, so you can... After you've put Alzur on the field, you can play three spell cards, and for each of those, Alzur will spawn a completely random unit with the same provisioning cost of the spell that you just played. And that actually creates some really absurd situations, as you'll see in the matches that we're going to show after this. Um, but to support this, of course, we need spells. On Aeromancy, is a spell, has 13 provisions, and can be played twice is just an auto include in this deck as is Uma's curse Uma's curse is also a spell 11 provisions and can create and play a gold unit from any faction so again a very random card and that's basically the team throughout this entire deck we have a few things that we can control but other than that this is just absolute madness i could have even just called this deck the alzu's madness deck because it is absolute madness to just look into that madness a bit further we have artorius again random creating a bronze copy from your deck you have three choices but again it's create it's pretty random cantarella playing the top card from your opponent's deck completely absolutely ridiculously random and you can play her twice because of coup de grace where you just destroy it and then play another card from your opponent's deck it is crazy it is just really really fun and obviously i also get into a lot of situations where you just don't get the right cards and that's fine because this deck is just so much fun um, that I'm just going to change it up a little bit. So usually we play one example match but since I can't guarantee that I'm going to win I'm going to play a few and I'll show you the highlights of this uh, those matches because um, yeah it's really fun. Also keep that to the last round because he's really really powerful. Other than that you have a bit of assimilate so you can uh, just set up with a few of the assimilate cards like the Artfane Heavy Cavalry and the Imperial Diviner and then just use the Duchess's Informant to start copying your opponent. But that's not the most important thing in the deck. Of course Alzur is the most important thing in the deck. Um, there's a few more synergies in this deck like Yennefer's Invocation is also a spell card for 9 provisions and can place an enemy unit from the field on top of your deck, which can be played with Joachim the Vet and boosted by 8 as well. So there's a few really nice combos, um, and then maybe the last card that I want to talk about before we head into the highlights is Fionn Var Garnel, because Fionn is a defender and we want to defend poor Alzur, because Alzur is pretty vulnerable, has no special defensive capabilities uh, he's just standing there with 6 power and that's it, so he can be easily destroyed. But Enough talk about the deck composition, you can find it at the Play Gwent website in the link in the description as well. Because, uh, yeah, if you want to try this madness out for yourself. But again, not a competitive deck, it is something that you really need to try for yourself. And then, something that I really noticed lately, oh, we don't even get double cross now. Um, is that, if you play Nilfgaard these days, you often get just faced with more Nilfgaard. Well, if you play any of the other factions, I don't often see Nilfgaard, which is... Really, really weird, but nevertheless. And then we get Artorius for ourselves. He's probably gonna... Ooh, poison. Poison. Okay. 
Well, this is going in the highlights. Um, I have no idea why they just forfeited. I think they're, they're, maybe dinner was ready, lunch was ready. It's lunch on, on my time zone, but nevertheless, okay, next. Well, for a deck that is literally called Alzu's Double Floss, I guess it makes sense that we just go for the complete madness and a random forfeit to start. Um, but there we go, Mahakam Forge. So that means that we're gonna get a lot of dwarves on the field. Um, um, do we need the squirrel? Because the squirrel is in there. I, I mean, it is in the logo. You have to know that if I make weird decks, there's gonna be a squirrel in there. Um, but do we need it? Might as well keep it. Um, although, nah. Nah, let's get rid of the squirrel. Ah, there we go. We have Alzur immediately. And now we could lock something. Or... Let's keep the lock. And uh, we have Kaltagala as well. Artorius. Artorius into the Mage Infiltrator then, I suppose. And then we can just put that in between here. And we could get the full six damage. And we kill one of the dwarves, which is also good. Now, some more vitality. Fair enough. I think we're gonna start playing Kaltagala. Uh, so let the random madness begin. Um and play Cantarella, and we got Novogradian Justice, yes! <laughs> so, absolutely useless for us, but that means that they can't really get those, um... <laughs> the, the, what are they called? The Marauders? Is it the Marauders? The, vo the Volunteers out of the deck, they can't get those out of the deck easily anymore. Ah... <sighs> I love the just random absolute madness. I don't have an aeromancy, which is sad, but I think I'm just gonna lock something and call it a day. Um, I don't even need to lock. I'll just add some bleeding on the marauder over there. Because those are marauders. All those dwarves with their titles and stuff. And if they pass, I can just back his rock slide. But yeah, okay, we get Dennis. Okay, that's absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine. I'm just gonna pass. Because, yeah, I'm just here to showcase Alzur. Alzur and his magnificent double flossing. That's got that. That might have been a bit weird on camera. I was trying to do a flossing motion, but I think it might have been misconstrued otherwise. Infiltrators are really good against monster decks, by the way. Um, just to get rid of those larvae. But there we go. Another four point Magna Division. Or five points. And then we go into round three. Yeah, I need to keep I need to keep the thunder, because otherwise I don't have three spells if I want to maximize all those costs. Um I could go for the dwarf killer and the infiltrator. Yeah, let's just do this. Ah, we get Fion. Okay. Okay. It's actually really good. Um, let's get Fion on the field. Um, and I'd like to play also on the melee row. You'll see. You'll maybe see why. Because uh, there's a good chance you actually pull Damien with Alzur as well, and then you get another charge for your leading ability. So that means that Fion also goes to the melee row. So now we just have three, um, three spells in our hands, so that's good. Then we're gonna play... I could play Glynis now. And then... Do double cross? No, I'm gonna keep double cross for the next round. No, not round, the next turn. Okay, so we get the engines on the other side, that's fine. Because um, he's gonna get boosted by one. Ah, uh, I should have played Alzur first, but never mind, never you mind. So let's play Alzur on the melee row as well. Then do double cross. And with double cross, we get. Ooh, that is a very nice combination of cards, I think. Do I have a nature card? I don't think I have a nature card right now. Um, could have, could have, could have been because of Cantarella. But Figgis, and now we put that over here, and now our entire row is defended. <laughs> ah, this is this is already starting out really, really nicely, and we haven't even gotten to Alzu's madness yet. So, Mahakam Defender, that gives, yeah, another armor and another boost. Okay, fair enough. So, let's play Uma's Curse. Oh, that is 
Damn you. Do you get a profit from Horson's Freak Show? Yeah. Um, deploy move. Ooh, that's even better. Frenzy now. And then, of course, uh, Cal Tullis. <laughs> Cal Tullis would be shooting myself in the foot because I have more units at the moment. So, Frenzy now. Uh, and we get. Oh, we get a two point Garrett, which is. Oh, I love this. I love this. Let's just put uh, Xavier over there because he only works on the melee row. Uh, I'm gonna laugh a lot during these recordings. This is that this deck is just absolute madness. Um, wait, he still gets boosted. That's not fair. Um, let's just blast him in the face then. Ooh, but that's on the range row. <laughs> Need that on the range row. Never mind. But that's an extra six points. So basically, if you're looking at the board right now, Alzur was already worth 14 points. So even though my draws are really really bad. My random draws are really, really bad. Um, it doesn't really matter. So tempering went on Xavier. But I should probably play also Stunder on Xavier again. What's this? But I didn't get profit. That's... <laughs> oh, I love this deck. So everything is defended, by the way, right now, because of that double defender. Um, so I don't really need to worry about getting hit too much because both of our defenders have um, armor. So we even have Force Protector, he's, they're gonna probably get um, Tempering out. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Just to get Xavier going again. Um, let's just play that Infiltrator over there. No worries, no. Um, and then the last few moves are gonna be Joachim. Then try to get him with Coup de Grasse. Aha, we get a Defender over there as well. The Fender goes over there. Um, that is absolutely fine, because I can even move that out of the way if I want to. Um, but, Joachim, that is useless, but let's put that over there. <laughs> Another Magnet Division. Um, and as you can see, we're actually losing now. Even though we got about 17 points out of Alzur. It's not over just yet. But it doesn't look too good. I guess I'm gonna lose this one. Um, we're nine points behind and even... Oh, we get actually Coralty Heatwave there. Fair enough. Let's coup de grasse. And play that again. Can we put that over here? That's not gonna help. That's not gonna make a difference. Uh, we got that again. Okay. So we didn't win. But well, that was a good showcase of what this deck is all about. Just random bullshit. Because um, if we had something else and Geralt, that could have been way better. Ah, we got another Geralt in the face there. Okay, fair enough. So as you can see, very competitive. Let's do another one. And by the sounds of it, our third double floss is going to be against Congregate. Congregate, which is... I really like playing against con Congregates with spying units because you can just fill their rows even though they don't want to. And we got the squirrel. This time we're definitely keeping the squirrel. Um, so let's get rid of that guy and then let's get rid of D. I'm twirling my fingers around. Um, I guess... Yeah, the Diviner. Aha, we get, we get an Aramancy this time, which is good. Because that means that I can at least get also out with an Aramancy if you need to. And we, of course, start with the Magna Division. Because they can just keep boosting and probably get destroyed by the first card our opponent plays. Nilfgaard really has bad bronzes. I'm starting to agree with the internet on that one. Nilfgaard has very bad low provision bronzes. Which makes it hard to bleed your opponent. So a lot of dwarves. A lot of dwarves. That is, is fine, I suppose. Um, let's get the... the hmm. Do we want to go with the bullshit situation already? Yeah, let's just let's first get the thinning out, since I still have a soldier on the field. And then we can go with the Cantarella. Yeah, that is absolutely fine. You're doing very well. Uh, let's Cantarella the hell out of this place. <laughs> oh, this is all, the first fun thing. Okay, so we get... Hmm... We got that. That's four points of damage, right? So, um, going into this guy. 
Too bad, that was a four provision card, if I'm not mistaken. So, that's four provisions, right? Yeah. Not the best thing that you could have, but let's do that again. Ah, uh, this is absolutely ridiculous. So let's grab that Cantarella again. Um, and play whatever this is gonna be. And this is gonna be... Ooh, this is, this is extremely juicy. Oh, this is fun. I got their, their, their important cards. <laughs> their echo cards. Oh, I love Cantarella. I know some of my viewers don't agree, but Cantarella is the best. Just the random shit you can have happening with Cantarella. Like this, we just completely wrecked one of their strongest guards. And then we get excommunication. Um, so we don't even need the squirrel anymore because the echo card is gone. Yeah, I'm definitely going to pause. I'm not going to continue this, this train of thought. Ah, oh, yes. I love Cantarella. I mean, not, not in a physical sense, it's a art and a fictional character of a, a woman of pleasure that is using her profession to steal information from high-ranking officials. But, you know, I like the card. So right now we have a handful of Echo cards. <laughs> so that's fine, I guess. So let's get rid of... Oh, wow. Well then. Um, can we get Alzur? No, no, we don't get Alzur. I mean, with all those spell cards in my hand, I could just definitely play Alzur. Let's just get the Artfane Tortoise out there. Because I'm guessing we're going to get a pass. They're just preparing some coins. There we go. Do I get rid of that Artfane Cavalry dude? That doesn't really matter, I suppose. There we go. So the Infiltrator is kind of good, because with the swarming, I want to reduce the amount of units on our opponent's side as much as possible. So let's get rid of that. And... Locking? Locking isn't. Locking is not the game that we're playing at the moment. And we get, ooh, we get Artorius. So we might as well get rid of the Duchess Informants. Nope, <laughs> we, still, we still don't get, um, we still don't get Alzur. Um, so then I think we're just gonna play this like this. Like Joachim and then, oh crap. Oh, that's not good. Because that's gonna force me to purify that Joachim. No, 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 I don't want to, no. <laughs> Never mind, Never mind. we're doing it like this, fine, fair enough. Leave it to a fool to blunt yes, I know, rub it in, dick. <laughs> I suppose that's it. We got rid of Veil, we got three assimilate units on the field, might as well do double cross now. Absolute madness, absolute madness, ooh. Ooh. Um, yes, please. Yes, please. Thank you. Although that that only <laughs> that only boosts fire sworn units. I might have made a bit of a mistake there, but that only boosts fire. I should have taken the priest. What are we gonna do first? Let's reduce. Yeah, let's do that first. Let's reduce um, Joachim's power to one. So that means that we can use um, Coup de Grasse again in the next turn, as long as they don't boost Joachim over the top. So if I can get Joachim, he's gonna... they're gonna... Oh, he... oh no. Okay, that was very well played. That was... That was... I need... that's a... That's... 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 that was very well played, I just... At once, both truly remarkable and bloody annoying. Yes, that was really, really good. That was really good. Um, but before before I start stroking that guy's, um, that person's ego too much, uh, let's play, wait, am I? Yeah, I have an Aeromancer, right? There we go. Um, let's get Alzur out. There we go. Alzur. Alzur, let the madness begin again. I'm a fool. A fool for playing this deck. Oh crap, um, I forgot about the... Yeah, I did forget about the... Don't, don't hit, thank you. Okay. Okay. I should probably get the most out of Alzu right now, so let's do Uma's Curse. Ooh. Uh... Um, I should suppose T-Boy, because that's freaking 13 points. <laughs> Why? 
Why? Uh, four point cards. Never mind. Please don't kill Dalzu now. No, please don't. Shaq. But Shaq? Ah, but Shaq? It's not a crime card, so we don't get. So that's a double spawn on those. Fine. Fine. Um. Ah. I can do it like that. Okay, okay. I got a plan. I got a plan. Definitely got a plan. Um, Yennefer's Invocation. Grab. Okay, I suppose. <laughs> uh, we got Malta. Malta. And then Sacred Flame. Um, hmm. So, the plan is gonna be very interesting. You'll see it in a minute. Um, so first off, I should have used Becker's Rock Slide earlier, I think. But never mind. Becker's Rock Slide, all that Fallen Knight. Wait, we do catch... Oh, this is going to be tight. Yeah, let's just do this. If there's a problem, I can just... And we get another 6 points. So that is basically 22 points from Alzer. So even though we're facing one of the strongest decks of the meta right now, Congregate is pretty good, especially combined with crimes. Okay, so that's not a crime. So let's just play also Stunder, because we're we're nothing if not consistent with our team. Um, I really don't know what... Yeah. <laughs> ah, this is absolute madness. We got Procession of Penance, so that's another 12 points. Let's get Horson, even though I, I don't... I have crimes! I have crimes! <laughs> this is perfect, but I don't have any money. So I'm just going to transform also into a cut-up. Because that makes sense, right? Um, I think my best move now... They can't really spawn anything more. So I should, should just probably just put that over here. There we go. And then do this. That gives me an extra point. <laughs> 13 points ahead. But of course their Sacred Flame are going to easily surpass. <laughs> is going to easily surpass that. And we get Grand Inquisitor healthy. But he can only spawn one more. Two more. One more. So that, that was better. But yeah. There we go. That was actually not that bad. That could have been much worse. If I had taken... I should have probably taken the Priest. Uh, healthy. Because that would have been better, but I wouldn't have been able to do more than 12 points with that. Um, so yeah, that was that was really fun. Um, you know what? One more for absolute madness. And we got Nilfgaard again with lockdown. Never you mind. Um, you get a thunderbolt. You, if you get a thunderbolt. You get a thunderbolt. Uh, if you were drinking uh, every time I said the word madness, you're probably drunk off your ass right now, which is perfectly fine for this deck. Perfectly fine for this video, because again... Absolute madness. I said it again. Uh, let's get rid of a Duchess Informant. Um, and we're playing Nilfgaard, so I don't really have much use for the Infiltrator. Um, I could use the Squirrel. I could use the Squirrel. I could use Duchess Informant as well. I could lock something, but then the pure... Yeah, let's get rid of that guy. There we go. Absolutely fine. And then, as I said, Cantarella. So let's see what craziness we can ensue with. Ooh! 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 I'm gonna keep saying ooh! Oh, we're taking all their cards. All their cards. They're all mine! What the hell was that? Ah, uh, we got Coup de Grasse into another Cantarella, into Fion. So they just lost... Is that 19 provisions? That's 19 provisions, right? No, no, that, that. That's 10, and then Fion is 9, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I just took 19 provisions from their deck. Um, well, let's do that again. <laughs> They're gonna so forfeit. <laughs> oh, this is, this is just, this is just, this is just the best. Um, and now we play <laughs> Artorius. 
And then we play, we play this. And then we just do this. Now you see me. Now you don't. <laughs> Am I glad I played another round of this? Oh man, that was awesome. I love Nilfgaard for stuff like that. I don't like Nilfgaard for the poison and the locking, but that was... That was just absolute madness. Do I have enough space in my hand for all the echo cards? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because I, I have another... I have two coup de grasses now. I mean, they're not spells, but... <laughs> this is crazy. Um, yeah, I don't need to squirrel anymore. I'm just gonna make this... The best hand that I can get, I suppose. Um, Assimilate is going to be better, right? So let's get rid of the tortoise. Ah, I don't really need the magnet division. No, I don't need... I don't know why I'm talking like this all of a sudden. It's absolute madness, as I said, so let's just pass. The funny thing is, I don't even have Joachim in my hand right now. And I really need Joachim to make everything else work. So, uh, we don't have double cross, but we can get rid of that. Oh god, this is gonna suck. Oneromancy or Joachim, please, because I don't have... I mean, I could have stuff. Do I need that third spell? I need that third spell. Um, let's get rid of the Infiltrator. Packers Rock Slide. I don't need also Stunder anymore. Ah, for God's sakes. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have a plan for this anymore. <laughs> But wait, so they don't have a defender and they don't have coup de grace. So that kind of works in my favor. So no defender means that both Yennefer's Invocation and Becker's Rockslide are going to be A-OK, -okay, I suppose. Masquerade Ball. Aha! Okay, but that's good. That is not good. No, that is not good. <laughs> that's karma for you. So I get your gift. <laughs> I get your gift. Oh, that is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, can hazardous to your health. <laughs> you, to your health. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Um, so, let's purify... <laughs> let's purify that away. <laughs> I have no idea where this is gonna end. Because <laughs> it looks like they're winning, but again, I have Yadavir's Invocation and Becker's Rock Slides. I can... Make more of those thirsty dames. I can defend, and there's the other Joachim. I can defend, and that's an aristocrat, so that's gonna be the second poison. Oh, the second and the third poison. Yeah, they're, they're lucky. Okay, so now they can definitely take that out. <laughs> this is, this is getting out of hand a little bit. So they're probably gonna have more poison. Which is bullshit, because there's already four poisoners on the field. Uh, but probably Vincent van Morlem as well. Because I've basically done the thinning for their deck. So there's not going to be much in there anymore. So I'm guessing that defender's going to go. No. That defender doesn't go. Thinking can, be hazardous to your health. <laughs> can be, still be hazardous to your health. But there we go. Also, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ah, uh, boring. So Uma, Uma. Ooh. Um, I said ooh. Um, I would say damage, but there's way too many, too much armor on the other side. So I'm guessing Leto, although I don't have any of that. And this is four, four. If it has armor damage, it by six instead. Yeah, let's go with one-eyed Betsy. And we got four points on the Alzu trigger there. And we got six points on... Um, yeah. Six points on Glynis. So I'm gonna take out Glynis with Becker's Rock Slide then. And if we don't get immediately destroyed... Which I don't think they can, unless with... Ah, Karate Heatwave. <laughs> is that a jest, friend? But I don't know, is it? I have no idea whether it's a jest. Friend. So yeah, I should probably just poison something with that. There we go. And then poison the Thirsty Dame. Which is something that I won't be able to finish, but this was a very funny match. <laughs> I love that. Sadly, I also got taken out prematurely, so that's probably the reason that we're gonna lose. 
We're gonna get poisoned again on that one, yeah. Um, I could kill Morale. I could kill Morale with Becker's Rock Slide. So that is that, but we're, yeah, we can only do 14 points. So we've already lost, which isn't that bad. I liked where this was going, especially the first round. I should have maybe pushed um, the Madness into the... They're really overdoing that, but there we go, 16 points. And we're definitely not GGing that guy. But that was that was a very funny match, so that was really good for the highlights. So again, you're not going to win a lot of matches with this deck, but the absolute randomness of also is just too much fun to have. I have laughed more in this these 40 minutes that I've been recording. Is it 40 minutes? Probably, yeah, 45 minutes. And then in any of my other videos, just because this is so much fun, the randomness of it all. Uh, but let's take one more look at the deck. So by the way, I think that match was also a very good demonstration as to why Nilfgaard is definitely not underpowered at the moment. Yes, the four power and maybe even the five power bronzes aren't really strong, but the gold cards and the mechanics in Nilfgaard itself are enough to offset that. There's plenty of pro players that have proven that to this point as well. Um, but yeah, if you want to do something completely different than what pro players are doing, try this out. It's just it's just a lot of fun, especially towards the end of the season right now. It's it's just a deck that just puts a smile on my face, as you might have noticed. So one last time, if you want to experience real absolute madness, drink another one. And this deck is, uh, is one for you. This is a deck um, composition. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, because um, this is going to be the last video of the season on deck specifically, we're going to review the cards in the next video, the new cards of the Way of the Witcher expansion. So look out for that. But if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like right here on YouTube. Every support is really, really appreciated. Um, and yeah, thank you guys enormously for watching. And this was the, well, this was another episode of Gwentech. And uh, see you guys next time in the next episode of Gwentech. Thank you and goodbye.